Hello, everyone. This is Rev Brad on the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. Today's podcast is part of our Lesson from Lasso series, so if you're short on time, when you hear that Ted Lasso theme song, you can skip ahead a minute and get right into the pod. Apple TV's Ted Lasso show has been very popular, and a lot of what we see on the screen gives a glimpse of life at a football club. Being around a professional team for some 25 years, I thought I would offer a chaplain's perspective on some of what we see in each episode. There are some great lessons to be learned, whether you're a person of faith or not. You might be an athlete, a coach, or simply a fan of the beautiful game. I think you're going to find a lot of clever and creative wisdom in this series. Thanks for joining us today. Here we go with another lesson from Ted Lasso. He's found the space, and he's found the back of the net. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career. The third of the night. The hat trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner. Goes towards the near post. And you're the angle. And what a goal! What a goal! It's the end of episode eight, season one, and we see a couple of exchanges to close out the show. First, Rebecca and Higgins go at it. Rebecca's fine to give away tickets to the visiting team, though it might damage AFC Richmond's hopes to avoid relegation. Higgins tries to warn Rebecca of this, but she's still intent to stick a dagger in her ex-husband's heart for his former club by seeing it go down. Higgins warns Rebecca, you won't take away your pain by constantly punishing Rupert. Rebecca fires back on Higgins for his emerging sense of morality that didn't exist when he worked to distract Rebecca and hide Rupert's extramarital dalliances from her. Higgins, though, in the moment, he owns up, he apologizes to Rebecca, but the hard-hearted Rebecca won't have it. Higgins ends up quitting. Moments later, Keeley enters. She shows Rebecca the photographs that were discovered on a paparazzi camera used to set up Coach Lasso for a bit of tabloid scandal. Keeley pledges to speak to Ted if Rebecca won't, and she promptly walks out, leaving us all hanging until the next episode. So at play here is an issue of revenge. Namely, Rebecca is out to try and cause as much pain and hurt to her ex-husband Rupert as she possibly can. She imagines, whether she's right or not, that her sinking of his beloved football club out of the top tier of English football will cause him the pain and heartache that she has felt with becoming a bit of a laughingstock out of a failed marriage and a divorce that she's had to go through. And each day, waves of pain as the details of Rupert's infidelity become more and more public knowledge and wider and widespread. Truth is, Rupert still holds tremendous power over Rebecca. His fixation on getting her fixation on getting even or getting revenge has even the loyal, dependable, and somewhat stable Higgins set off and gone. Now, we could say that Higgins is really just a yes man and a coward, but here he seems to be finding his voice and somewhat of a sensibility. You won't take away your pain by constantly punishing Rupert. Higgins' warning gets at this issue of why revenge and revenge-seeking is a life and soul suck. Hurt and pain is part and parcel to this life backstabbing, disloyalty, sleeping around, and a host of other similar sins darken the luster of football life, especially pro football. There's a lot of cause for one to seek revenge. Being around the game for nearly a quarter of a century, I feel like I've heard and seen it all. Athletes cheating on spouses, spouses cheating on athletes, coaches taking money under the table to bring in players and not play them, executives who glad hand a coaching staff and say, I've got your back one minute, and then turn around with HR, the press, and they fire the backroom staff in the next. Players promise the world by agents only to be ignored on the mobile phone when things aren't quite what was promised or don't work out quite the way that someone had planned. I could go on and on with more and more examples. But what does the Bible tell us about revenge and these life moments when we're tempted to seek revenge against an opponent, an enemy, or someone who's hurt us? The Apostle Paul writes to Christian believers in Rome about some really practical ways that their faith was to integrate into life, especially around this issue. In Romans 12, 17 through 21, Paul writes, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. 
Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge. Let me say that again. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Paul here connects people back into the Jewish scriptures. Since the wilderness wanderings, God had essentially told his people, for thousands of years, revenge is for me to worry about. You lay it down. You leave it alone. Revenge is placed on equal par with holding a grudge against someone. You see, God knows. Those things that we hold against people, the mentality it takes to seek revenge, actually damages our minds, our hearts, our souls. Higgins somehow sees and knows this. How? We aren't quite sure. But he offers wise words to Rebecca. Romans 12 offer us more to it. Think of this. Go through the stages. Don't repay evil for evil. Do what is right. As much as it's in our power, live at peace with people. Let God's wrath have its way. In fact, we're to be about reconciliation and healing. And finally, we're to try to overcome evil with good. My friends in football, it's likely easy to think of that situation or that person where you could, you'd love to see tragedy befall that person, or you'd love to see uh, see the sinking of hooks of revenge into someone and see them go deep. But we are to do more than just avoid this. We are actually supposed to move in the opposite direction. Don't seek revenge. It won't get you the satisfaction that you believe it will. Well, thanks for listening to this lesson from Ted Lasso. This is Reb Brad coming to you from the Touchline.